Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and today I'm doing the 100 mile loop test I do on different trucks, and I wanted to do it on this new 2022 Toyota Tundra. If you're first time on the channel, welcome. You will see on this channel a variety of videos I'm doing on this 2022 Toyota Tundra. It's a limited, it's I bought it for the channel because I want to do more of a long term review on it than I typically do in other trucks and SUVs I do on this channel. You usually get those about seven days. Uh, just to kind of recap on stuff, this is a blueprint exterior color. I have a bolder. Uh, color interior this is the soft text it's kind of like a leather kind of like a cloth kind of like a plastic it's really interesting material i like it though a lot the heated seats work really well um, ventilation has been good so no concerns with that interior at all um, the plan is i'm going to drive 50 miles west turn around and drive 50 miles east sorry there's a weird looking dog 50 miles west turn around and drive 50 miles east right and i'll fill up again so i just topped it off okay let's fill it up it's mostly full This gas station does the $50 thing. I just put 50 bucks in and then it screwed me up. I had to reshoot the video. There it goes. There's the click. So we are full of the click all the way. Okay, let's start it up. And then we'll reset. Let me get out of the sun a little bit. Reset the triple miter. So I'll go down. I'm gonna hold and reset that. And then, so it's reset, average trip's reset and our gas gauge is full. So let's hit the road. I just reset the tripodometer. Now, the tripodometer on the screen showed like 13.3, which is complete garbage because I do a lot of idling with this truck. I sit, a lot, sit around and check features out and I sit in the truck and I idle a lot to talk about things from the videos. So this is the first like true test. Now, if you think back when I bought this, I drove it from Houston to uh, Scott's Bluff and I was, was it 16 and a half miles per gallon? So to talk about this, this has got the new 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 engine, mated to a 10 speed transmission. We'll talk a little bit more about that in a little bit. Um, it's got a 331 rear axle ratio. I have 20 inch tires, I believe they are. Um, I'll put that down below, you guys can see it. But I'll put the, you know what I'll do is put the sale sticker on the screen. The sale sticker on the screen has all the details. $67,000 out the door. I put my taxes in a loan, all kind of stuff. That's what it was out the door, just because the way I do business. Um, the bigger screen again i went limited because i wanted to hit the steering wheel and heated seats even though the heating wheel is questionable at best i have a video coming on that that i'll link to eventually um, i have a thermometer test i've been doing on this thing and uh, it's really interesting results compared to this versus other brands so um, like i said i'm just gonna hit it down westbound and down and get on the road um, another thing i want to make sure i talk about I, I have lots of things to talk about in this video before i get all the way in the west so if you're looking for just the number if all you want is the economy number, get the end of the video. I'm going to talk for a little bit and people are going to, you know, whatever. So if you want just that number, get the end of the video. I'll put it, I'll try to do a chapter thing where you can just uh, fast forward. But I want to talk about a couple things. Number one, there's been a lot of controversy in this truck as far as the engine. You know, a lot of people wondering why the V8 went away. Why, if this doesn't get that much better fuel economy than the V8 got, what's the point? There's been a lot of conversation about that. And there's always a lot of concern on reliability of the turbocharged engines and how long they're gonna last there's you know a lot of people have this thought in their head that the turbo is gonna explode and this fiery crash is gonna go down and everything's gonna blow apart it's it's really fascinating from my viewpoint when i start looking at the stuff so like we've done deep dive information uh reliability stuff and information on like say the ford f50 because it has the five liter v8 and it has the eco boost and that eco boost is a it's not the same as this engine, but for the average consumer, it sounds the same, right? Same displacement, same 10 speed transmission, same turbos, even though Toyota's number is actually 3.44, whatever. They're, and the turbos are different, I, I get it. But from the average consumer standpoint, it's another engine with a small displacement, uh, small displacement engine with turbos. In our reliability research, we have actually found more reliability problems in the five liter V8 than we have in the EcoBoost engine. Okay, let me, and let me make one more final point on this V8 um, versus twin turbo V6 conversation. A lot of people are gonna talk about fuel economy as the biggest driver of that change. And really, it's about the NOx gases in the atmosphere. This is interesting, I'll put some stickers on the screen. I went back in time, and I went around to all the different automakers, Ford, GM, uh, I think I found it was, I found a Chevy, V8, I found a Ram Hemi, I, I found the Ford 5 liter V8, I found the Ford EcoBoost, uh, and I found the Toyota Tundra with a 5.7 liter, liter V8. I'm going to get speed up here and set my cruise at 70, by the way, while I'm doing this test. Let you guys know that. But I looked at all of them, 
And it's interesting, the Toyota Tundra with the 5.7 liter V8 was the worst polluting V8 engine that I could find in the full size truck segment. It was 630 some uh, grams of NOx per mile or something. And what's interesting is you look at like the, the V6 now, it's like 430. They've decreased that number by 30%. This is 30% less polluting than the V8 engine went out. This is actually about the same number that the Ford 5.0 liter with the EcoBoost has. Now, what's interesting is Ford was able to figure out with the five liter V8 to get that number to 496. So they have, somehow Ford's made improvements, nobody else has made, <laughs> to get the pollution down on the five liter V8. So I need to go back in time and go back and look at a five liter V8 and figure out what Ford's doing there. But that's interesting, right? So uh, a biggest reason, one of the big reasons why is fuel economy plus emissions, and this truck emits a lot less. Now, if you look at tightening fuel economy standards, tightening emission standards are the biggest thing. Tightening emission standards globally are causing problems. So like uh, this engine's used the Land Cruiser, it's gonna be used an LX600, which has gone global. And so it's really not just about United States and their emission standards, it's about global emission standards and California throwing it. You know, California's always a kind of a pain, emission standards. But getting those down by 2050, they're saying non-hybrid cars should be between 170 to 200 grams per mile of NOx emissions. That's the targets for emission standards. So this engine, while brand new, in 10 years, probably won't make the cusp of meeting those emission standards as we move forward. So I think it's interesting. People are saying, I'm gonna wait 10 years to see if this engine is reliable. This thing may not last 10 years because of tightening emission standards. So there's two factors in play. First, fuel economy was always a huge concern with the old V8 engine. Uh, one of the biggest problems with that truck as far as criticism. And number two is you have the tightening emission standards for the NOx standards. You're trying to get the, ult the ultra lo low emissions vehicle standards to be lower and lower. If you look at the CARB board, which is California Air Resource Board, you see a lot of information about that. So let me get to those two points. The other controversy on this truck has been the five link coil suspension. The frame before was a triple tech frame, which was an odd combination of open seat channel and full, fully boxed. And then that, because of that with the leaf springs would ride a little bit weird. This truck here has a fully boxed frame and a coiling suspension similar to the Ram setup. It's not the same, but similar to the Ram setup with a five link coil suspension, control bar, that kind of stuff. And so the biggest improvement you feel is you will feel a much better ride quality. Um, I thought the Tundra TRD Pro with the softer suspension, because an off-road package rode the best out of all the Tundras of prior generation. And this Limited rides, I think, just as well as that TRD Pro did. So I'm excited to see what the higher trims with the air suspension have as far as even better ride quality. And so that's a huge factor. I do plan on towing with this probably next week. The weather's finally changed. We're not having blizzards at the moment. And so I'll be curious to see how much squat we're gonna have. That's typically the byproduct of going with a leaf spring to coil spring is you get more squat, which is not always a terrible thing, but it, aesthetically it doesn't look very good. And if you have too much squat, it does cause some problems with uh, handling and steering. Anyways, I wanna make those points very clear. Um, I've had some criticisms, you'll see a, a whole playlist. I've already done like 20 videos in this truck. I plan on doing probably 20 more. And so you'll have a whole bunch of stuff to talk about this truck. But I just wanna give you those updates. Um, I'm doing 70 miles an hour. I'm at, uh, I'm gonna flip the camera around. It looks like 1700 RPMs, no. Yeah, 1700 RPMs or so. And I'm in normal driving mode, by the way. I don't do these tests um, always in eco or sport. The difference is very minute because I've done some tests on that with different vehicles. But I'm in 70 miles an hour, which is the speed limit. And I am cruising along, adaptive cruise setup, lane centering assist, and lane departure assist. There's two different systems in this truck are both on. Let me see if they're both on. Uh, yeah, they're both on. And uh, so we're cruising along. So uh, real quick, lane departure assist, when you leave the lane, it'll beep at you. And lane centering assist uses the camera system behind the rear view camera to, to identify the lane lines and it'll make small adjustments to keep you on the road. I typically don't like either one of those systems. I like to drive by myself and just, just drive. But I will tell you, I'm getting used to lane centering assist. It's making it a lot less stressful as far as, not stressful, but fatiguing. It's not so tiring driving long distances. Like when I drove from Houston, I had a bunch of, I was driving north, wind was blowing from the west, like 60 miles an hour, it was a crazy weather day. And lane centering assist helped me stay in lane with using less 
steering wheel inputs. And when I got to my destination, I wasn't as tired as I, well, I would have been if I was battling the wind all day, right? And so those are two features I am using in this truck. I'm slowing down here, so I'm gonna do 50 miles an hour. On this route, there are gonna be four towns. Um, I'll just say them because you know the area. If you guys know the area, I have, um, let's see, this is Morrill. I have, or no, this is Mitchell. Mitchell, Morrill, I always get to mess up. Um, there's a little slight slowdown for Henry if you don't go through the town. We go through Torrington and then Fort Laramie. And so this is typically, I'll go from 70 to 50 to 30 to 25, I believe it is in Morrill. And Torrington parts is, is 25. And I think the highest speed I go is 70 on this route. So I will go, um, it's kind of a mix of city and highway just to kind of give you an idea of what we're driving today. And so, like I said, um, if you're looking for the full number, get the end of the thing. But let me get back up to speed here in a minute, and I will show you the, the fuel economy, or the, the dash screen. But before I do that, let me, let me flip the camera around real fast. I want to talk about this oil gauge. This has been, created quite a bit of controversy online. So we have that oil gauge. I hope you can see it just right. So there I am doing, what am I doing, 25. Oil gauge is below center, all right? And when you get on it, so I just speed up a little bit, you can see where that changes. Now, okay, here's the controversy, is that typically with gauges, we've been programmed as owners to like the fuel gauge, or like the uh, oil pressure gauge and coolant gauge to be dead not center. It's just, those gauges are analog gauges and they can set them to be whatever starting they wanna be. So they can kind of manipulate where those gauges set as far as in a normal idling situation. This gauge on the oil pressure gauge is quite low compared to other full-size truck brands. It's created some people wondering what's going on with this. So let me show you this. You can see I'm low, right? And I'm gonna turn, and then this goes immediately 70. So when I hit resume on this, you can see that gauge, oil pressure gauge, move, and it does move quite a bit, okay? I'm trying to get over this rain, railroad tracks. Okay, that's due to me driving moderately. If I really get on it, that thing really flies. And it's interesting because I'd like it to be half, but because it can go all about halfway when it really, when you really get on the boost, I can see where they want to set it less. I can see the argument in engineering, because if I was halfway and I really nailed it, I'd get really close to high pressure. When I'm high pressure, it's gonna create a lot of concerns about, oh my gosh, I'm damaging my engine. But if I keep it at lower and I go to just a little bit past half or a little bit more than half, then I have less concerns. So all I gotta say is, boy, this is a low pressure running engine. It's not that huge a concern. For me, the bigger concern is high pressure. So um, yeah, that's what I wanna say about that. So keep that in mind. I've seen that in, in different YouTube videos, people asking about it. That's going on with that gauge. I've talked to Toyota Engineering, and that is set correctly. There's, it's not incorrect. There's nothing wrong with the truck. That's how they set it up, and yeah, that's the answer to that. So uh, I'm gonna keep going down, not waste all your time by babbling this entire video, but you can kind of see with my hands where I'm kind of looking. Um, lane centering assist, is it a Thomas driving? Oh, hell no, it doesn't drive for yourself, but it is pretty handy. I, I kind of like it, and it's not so aggressive. Some brands are really aggressive, and this brand is, well, pretty nice. And yeah, if you don't grab the steering wheel, it's like, hey buddy, grab the steering wheel. Let's get down the road. I'm gonna go down and turn around at the 50 mile mark and head back. Okay, let's do a check-in here. So I'm at about the 100 mile mark. This is where I'm at, this is where a turnaround spot I've used in the past. It says 20.1 mile per gallon. And uh, yeah, the odometer says 1632, but I kind of screwed this up a little bit in that I forget with Toyota, there's a button over here for the odometer and a trip odometer. So I'm gonna reset this and so I'm gonna reset that. We're gonna go fill up the gas tank. I'm gonna get back to the house, watch this video, get the odometer setting from the earlier this video and then match the two up. So um, I'll just, we'll figure that out. But yeah, this is about my 100 mile turnaround spot. I've used in years past, so we'll be pretty close to 100 miles. Okay, let's top this off and see how much fuel we used. Okay, there we go, there it clicked at 3.711 gallons of fuel. 
Okay, just topped it off. Let me show you this, because I just gotta say, for the last 20 miles, I looked at this number, and I've been in shock. Let me show you. On the screen, 22.8 miles per gallon. 22.8. This is a four-wheel drive truck. I'm driving a two-wheel drive. You can see two-wheel drive. You can see the drive modes. I'm not doing anything special. I wasn't hypermiling it, wasn't going slow to stop signs. I have driven a dozens of trucks each year. I've been doing this 10 years, driven a lot of trucks. That is probably the best performance I've ever seen out of a small displacement V6 turbocharged engine. Full stop. I even, with my hybrid power boost, doing that same trip, I got, I think, about the same number, and this is not a hybrid. Now, that is if the number works out. So let's go back to the house. I'm gonna grab this slip of paper. Let's go ahead and figure out what the number of set an odometer. Do our math on paper and see how close we are. But if we're close to that number, that is, that's shocking. And it gives me some pretty high hopes for the iForce Max hybrid engine because, you know, this is a heavy truck. This is 5,000 pounds. You know, this is, let me show you the, tick, the sticker here because that's always a question, but yeah. I have, Seven, five, 5,000, let's see, gross big weight, 7,230, curb weight things like 5,000, and my payload is 1,400 pounds. So, it's still a heavy half-ton truck. I mean, there's nothing, Toyota's always had a heavier truck out of the segment, but this thing is, <laughs> let's go home and figure this out, because I'm still in shock at that number. That's, a, that's better than EPA. All right, back at my home office, I've just looked up that video I shot. So if you zoom in on that video, when I reset the trip odometer, it changes to the odometer, and that number says 1586, okay? So when I shot the last video at the gas station, 1677. My difference there is 91 miles. So I drove 91 miles, I did 100, I'm pretty close. Um, when I'm looking at the fuel I use, I use 3.711 gallons of gas, right? At the same pump, same number seven pump, same day. And oh, by the way, today was 50 degrees, was pretty sunny, no wind, uh, no real traffic. So those are pretty ideal conditions for, well, freaking January in Nebraska and for this trip. So when I do the math, when I divide 3.711 into 91 miles, I get 24.52 miles per gallon. Holy cow. <laughs> I didn't look back at my power boost videos when I had the F50 hybrid and look at the other videos I'm gonna do in, in the future here. I have a GMC Sierra coming, I have another Ford F50 coming, and I have a um, uh, Ram coming as well. But I, I gotta tell you what, those numbers are insane that I actually was able to best EPA in January. Usually in the summer, maybe a little bit better fuel, a little bit better conditions. But yeah, I, I pff, wow. And by the way, EPA is 22 miles per gallon. So say what you will, put in the comments what you're getting. I don't know, I am pretty damn impressed at this test, which I do with other vehicles. You'll see me do this again with the Ford, you'll see me do it again with the GMC, and you'll see me do it again with the Ram coming up. I'll keep doing this test, but that is probably the best fuel economy I've ever gotten out of a small displacement V6. I've gotten the V8s, I've gotten consistent EPAs, but never that freaking number. That number is insane. So for more, check the video over here, website down below. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.